Hey guys, I wanted to walk through another example of the Bayesian update, excuse me, uh, using Alan Downey's empirical dist module. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to import empirical dist as EMP. I'll import matplotlib the normal way so we can make some graphs. And I want to create a PMF that involves white and red. So let me let me set up the scenario. The idea is I, I have a friend, I loan them one of my 20-sided dies. Let's say it's a white 20-sided die. And I ask them to paint some some random number of sides of the die red. They don't and don't tell me how many. So for example, it could be that they paint eight sides red and paint twelve and leave twelve sides white, in which case I'd get a PMF, which I can produce using the uh, PMF object of the empirical dist um, module with a dictionary that has white and red as the keys and 12 and 8 as the values. So I've got 12 sides are white, 8 sides are red. I want to go ahead and grab the total number of sides on the die in case it's not 20 um, using the sum method of the uh, of the PMF and then I'm going to normalize it. Of course I, I have to do the sum before I normalize it because if I do the sum after I normalize it I'll just get 1 as the sum because the values will turn into probabilities. But the other thing I can do is after I normalize the, the PMF I can call the choice method and it will sample from the PMF with uh, samples of red or white depending on the relative probability of red and white. So it's going to generate a probability derived sort of random sampling. I can check to make sure uh, total is 20. Sure enough, it is. And then uh, I can also generate some hypotheses. So here's the idea. Similar to our other examples, I have a, a collection of hypotheses, which is that how many sides did he paint red? How many got painted red? He could have done 0 up to 20, right? And at the beginning, I don't know. It could literally be any of those. So my uh, prior probability is just flat. That means that any, the probability of any of those hypotheses are all the same, and they're just a tad less than 5% because I got 21 of them instead of 20, since I've got to include 0, right? Then I have a function here I call likelihood, which calculates the likelihood of each of the hypotheses given the data. So the data is either going to be red or white. Either you see a red or you see a white side come up um, when you roll the die. And if data is red, I'm going to return a collection of likelihoods where the likelihood is given by simply the value, how many sides did he paint red, um, divided by the total number of sides. So if he painted zero sides red, the chance of getting red is zero. If he painted only one side red, the chance of getting red is 1 20th. Do you see how that works? Two sides red, it would be 2 20th. So I can calculate the probability of seeing red as the hypothesis value divided by the total number of sides. On the other hand, if I don't get red, if I get white, the likelihood of that is the converse. So it's going to be 20 minus the hypothesis divided by the total. So if he painted zero sides red, then I would have a 100% chance of seeing white. So this would be 100, and so on. And I'm going to test it. If I put in white here, you see I get 100% white if zero sides were red. If all 20 sides were red, I would have a 0% chance of seeing white. So that would be the likelihood of white. If I change this to red, let's see if that works. Then it flips the other way around. And now uh, if he painted zero sides red, the chance of seeing red would be zero. Whereas if you painted all the sides red, the chance of seeing red would be 1, and everywhere in between. So my likelihood function is returning a list of likelihoods, an array of likelihoods, each corresponding to a particular hypothesis about how many sides did he paint red. Does that make sense? Now I can use the choice method to generate, so let's say I'll generate 10 samples from the distribution, then I'll make a copy of the hypo my original hypothesis, this one that where they're all equal. That's my prior hypothesis. And then the idea is uh, iterate through a loop where I update the posterior distribution by multiplying the old posterior by the likelihood of seeing that data. I'm going to iterate through the data 
red, white, white, red, 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 white, etc. Each time calculate the likelihood, multiply by the posterior, normalize, and repeat. So after 10 choices, let's see what I get. I get something like this. So it looks like it's favoring red. Now I don't remember. What did we start this out as? Uh, oh, wow. I hope, but let's try that again. I think maybe I didn't execute all these cells because I was playing around earlier with different ones. Yeah, that looks better. Now it looks like it's a little bit closer to 10. Um, let's take some more choices. Let's take 20 choices. Okay, how about 50 choices? There we go. Now it's starting to narrow it in here. How about 100? We'll s take 100 samples. Take 1,000 samples. That's a lot of samples. Boom. Now it's really nailed it down. And uh, it looks like it's right around 8. 8 sides are red after 1,000 samples. So what's my point? My point is that as you increase the n amount of data, as you add more data, you increase the certainty of the conclusion. And so if I, if I display this posterior distribution, come down here and you see 8, and it's got a 98% chance of being 8. It's uh, uh, about a 1%. 1.6% chance of being um, 7, and then a tenth of a percent chance of being 3. Okay? So that's kind of how it works. Uh, if you want to play around with it, you can go up here. Let's say we change this to um, white is 18, red is 2, and I could rerun all these cells. And it should, there you go, red is 2. Now it's way down here. So, and 2 is now, uh, oh, I have to display the posterior. Let's see what it says. Red is now 99.98%, so highly likely that it's two faces are red and the other faces are white. Anyway, that's the way it works. I hope that makes sense. Talk to you guys soon.